reaching for fortune and fame. I found where the water runs sweet from the hills. They call it the medicine springs. They call it the medicine springs. Well, it was there I met a fair maiden. She'd forever be true. That she'd forever be true. Well, I wanted the best for my darling, but my pocket. Took what another man had. Here's Camp Six, here's where we left off. We found Tim spotted this first. There's a cave right here. It's got a great big ominous face in there. I should pull that up. So here's Here's the cave. It's on the side of the hill there. We didn't get up to it. We had a, a, this canyon here in between us. Pretty rugged. But we got a, a video close-up of it. And here's some stills out of the video. So here it is up here. It's probably 15 foot tall, maybe more than that. 15 by 15 is my guess. Big. You can't get to it from below. The way is from the top down. And possibly, if there's a way, maybe through this vegetation that's right in there. Go to the top and then come down. So it's pretty protected. In fact, one of the Latin heartstones words is uh, vault. So this could be the vault. But uh, so as we get closer. Things get interesting. So here's a picture. We'll zoom in. It looks like there's a, f a car face in here. Maybe a skull, nose, two eyes, and a jagged mouth right here. Not sure what, what it looks like. The brain is kind of wired to recognize faces out of objects, so that might be imagination, possibly. The biggest, the closest one yet. Look at that. That sure looks like a face in there. And so, if I'm right, this is the Sun Temple here. The Sun God, his name is, if I can pronounce it, Wichi Puchel. He's also the War God. So, this is this this cave is facing the sun as the sun rises. So this could be where the sea, this is the god that needed the blood sacrifices as well, in order to keep the the sun rising every morning. That's why the uh, ancients did this, did the human sacrifices. So I thought it'd be interesting. I read an article about Teotihuacan. That the alignment of the city is at fifteen and a half degrees northeast. So for fun, I put a line on here at fifteen and a half degrees. East Azimuth, and this orange line here is where, where it struck across. And it just happened to go across this other side here, where the, this other cave that I was on the trip, sixth trip, I was really wanting to go see that. And that's right up in here. I want to get up and see what these holes are here. <clears throat> I think we could, could have got across this face here. We wouldn't know until we get there because it looks different than. It is on satellite imagery. 
So I thought, hey, that's pretty something. That's pretty cool. It just happens to line up with that. Interesting. So if we continue to look at the the alignment down through there, it keeps going down this way. One time I had found a, a little circle here in the satellite image. You can just make it out. So there's a, a circle right here. That's some kind of ruin of some sort. So I thought, well, what the heck is that? That's kind of alignment. What if these are these are temples? And uh, so Teotihuacan. Let's let's go there. Down northeast of Mexico City. So here's the famous Avenue of Death. And this is the Sun Pyramid. I think it's the third largest pyramid in the world. And the Moon Pyramid. The Avenue of Death in between. Down here is the Quetzalcoatl Temple. Quetzalcoatl is the, the god of creation and learning, which is going to. I'll talk about more here later. So we have a Sun Temple and a moon temple. So very ancient civilizations. The, the, the main basic gods were the moon and the sun. The moon and sun did battle. The, they called the, the moon the dark sun because it was out there at night and they were, did battle to control everything. So the sacrifices were given to the sun god, the sun temple, so he could have the strength to overcome the, the dark sun at night, which is also uh, the darker side, the evil side. So back to uh, Arizona. And so as I see that we got a, could have a temple here, the Latin Peralta stone, the Latin heart stone, shows an indicated a cave right here as well. Let me pull that up. See if I can find it. So you overlay the Peralta stone, Latin heart stone. Hope that's the Roman numeral. This is the one with assay recording. So they sampled the heck out of the top of this mountain for gold and silver, but. Here's the, the heart with the uh, Latin words in it. And right here is Spicus, and that's a Latin word for cave. Fornix could be mean arch or vault. Uh, domus means, you think a domicile or a house, but up here, nobody lives up here, or is gonna. So a house is also on the top of mine as the house of God or a temple. So that leads me to believe that this, this was a temple. There's three, three domus marked on the top of this mountain. One over here, one over here. And there's another mountain in near Mexico City that has three temples on the top of it. Uh, four of the sun god and the rain god and the corn or maize god. So the domus on the top are a good reason to believe they were temples. Another thing that was interesting is the this Latin word here, transio ecclesia, which is marked uh, translated prior by somebody else of religious area. And I thought, yeah, that's probably a good religious area. It's a big flat top of a of the mountain would be a good good great view. But you know, I didn't realize that it was maybe for sacrificing people at the top of a mountain. You're closer to the gods. So I retranslated Transio Ecclesia and came to the transition to the, from this world to the spirit world from being sacrificed to being possibly cast over. Water over gold could mean water that's, when was water over gold? Precious water was another word for sacrificial blood. 
So that was the most precious thing they could give the gods was blood. So that's marked on here too. Everything that's marked on the Peralta stones is there, including gold deposit, mineral mineralization over here. Right over here, there's like a 400 foot long by 50 foot wide dike with gold in it and silver, copper. So everything that's on here is here. So I started looking at these words harder, thinking about these harder. And so if this is the uh, sun temple, and up here is the, possibly the moon temple. Is it right here? Is it that circle? Is that the cave? I'm quite sure, yeah. And I started thinking, well, you know, the, the temple pyramid, moon pyramid in Teotihuacan is a certain size. And so I kind of measured it, and I, I, this is roughly the outline of the, the size of the moon temple. So if you were replicating this hill in a pyramid, you could come up with those same dimensions roughly. The top, the height is about the same from here to down here. I got it marked out right here and here. Same thing, it's about the same height. But this is the, the layout here is the width and the, the length. So it could be, this could be the moon temple right here. And this is what the pyramid was patterned after. Same size. So I thought, well, what they, what's significant about a moon temple? Maybe I should look at the moon rise, see where that hits. See if there's anything interesting there. So I did. We did it on the summer solstice, the winter solstice, and uh, very interesting. I get to the top here. So. This is the alignment of the moon, December 25th at 4.11 a.m., about 105, 106 degrees as north, east azimuth. That's the winter solstice. That's about when it's at the horizon, maybe a little bit off there, but I'll have to go out here and physically set here and watch it come up on these dates to, to verify it, but also June 23rd the summer solstice. Here it comes out, the moon comes out of here at 10, 13 p.m. Oh, and it's a full moon, too. December 25th, it's a new moon. So, winter solstice is a sign of rebirth that start over, the end of the year, the start of a new, and this is the new moon coming up here, coming up out of there. So if you can imagine, sitting on the top of this hill, looking up, and the moon is coming out of the earth right there, coming up and going out. So it's a new moon, which makes this place pretty magical. It's got to be, like you can see why. I get up to cooperate. So, whoop. So, you're sitting on the pyramid or the hill, and when this, when the moon comes up out of here, not back here, not back here, but right here, you know it's the winter solstice. You know, it's, or it's the summer solstice. And here's one maybe most people don't know about. April 23rd, 22nd, a full moon comes out of here too. So, in Arizona, in the summer solstice, it's too hot to signify the farmers to plant. Way too hot. It's 100 and something degrees out there. So it'd be hard to even get around out there. So, April 23rd, 22nd, this comes up, and that the temperature, every temperature is 85 degrees for a high, 60 for a low. Perfect temperatures to start farming, start the crops. So, so in the winter we have the 
new moon coming up, and uh, the, the, the sun, I even talk about the sun solstice from the sun pyramid. Yeah. And what's neat is that, remember we went and found this white circle here, this white rock, the catalytic rock, the same rock I talk about in my book, Unearthing the Key. It's got catalytic properties to it. That's the spot right there that this is where the, the moons come out. The new moons come out of the earth right there. So that's very heavy magic for the ancients, I gotta believe. A lot of cultures have been born off of this right here. Okay, winter or yeah, the winter solstice. I thought it would be fun to see how the sun, the this Google Earth program, will do the shades in the direction of the sun. I can't have a hard time maneuvering it. So I've got. I was lucky, I think, to to get the data one. I want to see what December twenty fifth, what the sun was doing then, how it was hitting. Just for the fun of it, and uh, in fact, I'm not going to be able to recreate it, I doubt. But I do. I did take a still of it, and so here's what happened: we get a sun ray. You see the other clouds just before this day, and then even beginning of the day, there's clouds everywhere, just like this. And all of a sudden, at a certain time of the day, on the 25th, there's a sunshine like this that comes up to here, about out to here, and back. And right at the circle that I had found down there is the tip. And it's about the same alignment as my center line. And this was just too much of a coincidence. I thought this is just too... I almost yelled out when I heard, when I saw this. Here's the uh, outline of it. Winter Solstice Shadow Line. Now I gotta believe that some shaman thousands of years ago was sitting on this hill at that right time and noticed this that had to get their attention because they could have set right up on this hillside you would have had to be on top to see it all the way across so they saw that and that was big magic Signif this dagger of light I call it across this mountain signifies it's time to go to war, to go get sacrifices for the the next the coming new year. So um, many things to prepare for. Winter solstice is very strong in the culture of this uh, the ancient Mesoamerican cultures all over the world. Matter of fact. But this outline here, you get this shape here. Uh, when you lay this over Tiwakan, Teotihuacan, it's kind of the same shape, this whole complex. That isn't just a coincidence. Here it is by itself. You can see the kind of the outline. I just kind of did a line of kind of the basic layout of the place. Here's the Sun Pyramid and here's the Moon Pyramid at the end. Quetzalcoatl here. Then overlaid. Not quite the same size but they're pretty close actually. So they're same bearing. So if you want to make copy a, a sacred place a good way is to build it with the essence of the sacred place and that's the bearing as how it's hitting the the earth and the sun and and the moon and everything. It's a good way to capture the essence of the sacred spot. They also made most of their buildings white, the pyramids were white, and the mountain with this catalytic rock is white. So there's a lot of white in this mountain. It's not completely white, but they knew that the white rock was the, was the magic rock. And so 
they wanted to make all their new buildings the same magic. They didn't know if it was the magic just because of the white or what I'm sure, but eventually they probably figured it out. Even the pyramids of Giza were made out of kind of a yellow limestone covered with a, a white quartz material to make them white. So, which pyramids were first, really? That's a good question. One of the things about all this, the ancients using, uh, were fairly sophisticated. They had calendars, great calendars. Mayan calendar, everybody's heard of the Mayan calendar. 20,012 was, December 23rd was supposed to be the end of the world. They have three calendars. The Aztecs have two. Basically, they're, the first two are roughly the same. 365 days is the, their solar calendar. Then they have a sacred calendar, they call it. It's 260 days. Mayans do as well. They don't understand why it's 260 days. All the experts can't quite agree. They're not sure. So they just said, well, it's it's connected to it like a, on a, two cogs on a machine. One's 260 days and one's 365 days, and they just rotate, and they kind of change. So it's kind of a flimsy explanation so when I saw that this solstice time for the moon was April 22nd from April to the winter solstice December 25th is 147 days and excuse me, 247 days. And so I subtracted 260 from that, you get 13 days. 13 days is the significance is one week in Aztec time is 13 days. So the 260 is the 247 days from April the moon rise at this sacred spot to the winter solstice plus a week. I, I would think that week was after the winter solstice. The solstice happened and it's signified by the light during the day, the dagger of light and the, the moon confirms it and they celebrate or prepare for war and they can for two weeks and they are sacrificing and then they go out and collect slaves for sacrifices for the following year, the new year. So it makes sense to me that that really calendar goes along with the 365 day calendar. It's not, they're really not separate, they're just different scales. So that's my explanation why there's 260 day calendar. It's this April date, which is, I don't think anybody really knows about that. I could be wrong, but it hits here at the right spot on April 23rd. I checked all the months, and this is those are the only times it does. So, all that is this the, you know, the original sacred spot. Did this start off even the Mayan calendars? Teotihuacan was built, experts say, in the first century, 100 B.C. even in there was this Teotihuacan I would say was patterned after this area so is this how much older is this area how much how long have people known about this most of these civilizations kind of took over each other as they went along and changed their names and merged and became different people but they always kind of kept some of the same religion the Aztecs did. The Aztecs weren't here. In fact, they didn't call themselves Aztecs, but the Spaniards did because they, the Spaniards, or uh, Montezuma told Cortez that the Aztecs came from Atzland, which was north. Nobody knows exactly where it's at, but a lot of people speculate it's the southwest United States. I do. I, I say it's right here, matter of fact. This is the heart. And uh, this is the heart of the Aztec origination. Um, 
So what civilization was here? The timing for the Aztecs is Cortez took over the Aztecs in 1520. They were there for about 200 years. 1325 is roughly when they got to Tenochtitlan. And they migrated for 200 years from Aztlan. It took them 200 years to find Tenochtitlan. So that means they would have been left here about 1100 AD. So there's a lot of time yet. There's a thousand years that Teotihuacan is, uh, was there prior. They was abandoned for 700 years before the Aztecs even found that, Teotihuacan. So, who were the old people? Was it the Toltecs or another old civilization? The, most of them, the civilizations always said they had, they were ancestors, Toltecs were their ancestors because the Toltecs were well respected and well admired. Toltec means master craftsman, artisan. Some believe that the Hohokam here in the valley are Toltecs, or they mix with the Toltecs. I kind of believe so. I, I, I believe they did. I I think the Toltecs and the Hohokams, Hohokams may have been the first ones here. They may have seen this. Uh, they were in the valley, a great agricultural society. Uh, the other god that's here, in fact, this may be for Quetzalcoatl, this white rock is the energy, the catalyst, is the god of creation or learning. And it's said that uh, the Aztecs learned agriculture from Quetzalcoatl. By being with this rock, they were able to learn how to farm. So there was the birth of agriculture from this god. So it's like uh, I explain how this energy works in my book, Unearthing the Key. Uh, was, this energy will structure water molecules, gas, changes gasoline, does a lot of things, changes the brain wave frequency of your brain. So they may have been onto it. I always wonder if ancients had found this beta quartz rock like I had. Well, I had never heard of it, but actually there's there's quite a bit of evidence that the, the real old great cultures did know about it. So the the uh, another th ancient ruin that was found in 1934-35 in the, the Phoenix Valley or the Salt River Valley or Gila Valley was Snake Snake Town, and that's at the uh, connection of the this Queen Creek right here and the Gila River. So if you follow the Queen Creek River out, you, there's where the Peralta Stones were found and you end up at the Gila River. Here's the Casa Grande Ruins which are a whole hokum. In fact the, the, the Casa Grande Ruins have windows strategically placed for the winter solstice sun and the moon rises. So you gotta believe that they were part of this. Um, uh, yeah, well, right here is the intersection, I'm sorry. Queen Creek comes around the hill to the north. So in this area by the Gila Reservation, there's a the ruins called Snake Town. Great big uh, Ruins of um, ball courts. Uh, very interesting. And they say these were dated at 300 BC. So if these were connected, uh, this, this stuff out in the superstitions out here was at least 300 BC. So if this was 
ancient Hohokam and Toltec. I kind of believe it. And eventually they merged with other groups and migrated south and they all sp sp spoke the same language, the Nautil language. And they end up in Mexico and they, the, uh, they call themselves the Mexica. So they, uh, the Spaniards named them Aztecs for being from Matsland. That's where that came from. So they actually call themselves something else. Now, if you've heard the stories about uh, the Silver Bell artifacts, they, written on them are stories of an area called Calais and Theodorus, a, a king, ancient king that came from Europe. Actually, they were a group of Roman Jews that came here. And it talks by 800 AD, it was written on the artifacts. Half the experts think they're bogus and half think they're real. Same thing with the Peralta stones here. Half of them say the Peralta stones are bogus or are just somebody messed around. But uh, as you can see, they're not. They're marked this hill and, and tell a story. Um, now the Tucson artifacts or the Silver Bar artifacts, I believe were made by, in fact I wrote a paper about it, uh, were made by a captain of a rancheria that Father Kino had baptized and gave him the name Juan Miguel. And Miguel's name is on the edge of the Peralta Stones. And he greeted Father Kino one time, who was coming to visit, with crosses and, and other artifacts for two leagues or seven leagues of trail to greet the father. So, and uh, he obviously was the one that was making these relics. Now, did he learn about Calais from the Jesuits, from the church? I, I kind of wonder if the church, that's why the Spaniards came here, because there was rumors of gold and, gold and valuable materials here and great civilizations 400 years before Cortez got, come here in Europe. So how did they know that? But So the, the stories of Calais and Theodorus and being here in 800 the 700s ADs uh, may have some truth to it. In fact, if you start researching it, there are stories of Europeans coming here the first century AD. Uh, they say they, they came here and, and lived and and eventually they merged with the, the ancient people that lived here, the Aztecs or the Toltecs, and eventually became pagans. And one of the kings came back, came here from Europe and to uh, stamp that out, bring the Jewish religion back in the 700, 700 AD, 750 AD. So there's some interesting reading and battles of, uh, of these kings fighting the Toltecs around 800 AD. In fact, uh, there's a big revolt in 883 of the Toltecs. They won their independence from the rulers. Israel the third, Israel the fourth are the kings. And uh, they got their independence. And the significance about that time, 883 A.D., is another part of the calendar for the Aztecs is that every 52 years, there's a, a big celebration and a lot of human sacrifices happen at some special time. So what's significant about the 52 years? Well, the experts now say, well, it's the two calendars in this cog, like a machine, rotate and they end up back at zero every 52 years. So I, I think the... Not sure why the 52 year cycle. Maybe it's that, but 883 is significant because it, um, the last festival sacrifice for this time, special time, was in 1507, according to the Jesuit priests that were there talking with the, uh, the priests of the Aztecs. 
So if you start back in time 52 years from 1507, eventually you end up right at 883, which is kind of neat. Maybe that's when that whole festival started, when they, it was a great celebration, and they wanted to make sure they paid tribute to the gods for delivering them from slavery to the uh, to the Rhodonites was what they were called. They lived in Rhoda and there's an R on the Peralta stones and the, the one stone tablet that's in the Tucson artifacts has an R in it by itself. And I just wonder if maybe Rodin was out here somewhere and they kind of showed it out in this area. This area. So there may be signs of it somewhere. I, I thought maybe it might be the the cliff dwellings of Rogers Canyon. Cliff dwellings over here. It could be. That could be where the early Europeans lived. So all this kind of fits together if you read enough stuff. And I, the stuff I'm reading, some stuff, you know, it's all slightly different. So nobody really agrees on everything. All the experts are slightly different. So you have to form your own opinion, but it kind of fits together. All that, all the timing fits together. So, very neat. So that's my story, and I'm pretty sure. Now, you know, all that we need to do is go out here and set on these hills, look at these artifacts, see what else is out there. There's going to be a lot more yet to see, and it's always a surprise of what we find. Um, we thought the last trip when we got to here, we thought, wow, shoot, that was a wasted trip. But man, oh man, was it a good trip. If we were to get wet, I will, the, my first course was going to go around this way and around the backside to get and go look at these caves. And about the last second I said, no, I'm going to go full charge right up through here. I was going to go up here and along this ridge and right to where I wanted to go. Well, we got here and it was a lot harder. And there's a big canyon here. It's very, very big. In fact, there's pictures on Facebook of it when we got to the top there. But So it would have took us half a day or more to get to the other side. So we didn't have the time or the resources. So interesting how things happen, though. The last minute I decided to go this way a few days before we went. But I decided this was the way to go. We end up finding this. If I would have went that other way, we wouldn't have found this, and I wouldn't have put this together. I don't think I would have. So it's definitely interesting how things happen. So I'm gonna. I've started a book on on this right here. It'll have a lot more detail in it. It'll be better than listening to me fumbling and stuff. But uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. This picture here shows the sun rising. Look how yellow this mountain is here too. I don't have the best angle from here to see what that looks like farther up, but uh, somebody from a distance might think that that, and never been here, might think that that's gold if they're in the right time of the day. Really bright yellow as the sun's coming up over here. Father Niza with the black slave Esteban came looking for the famed seven cities of Cibola or seven caves of Cibola which this I believe is the same area and Esteban went ahead and was killed by the natives that the Indians didn't want him want him there and he, they, he may have seen this and uh, they killed him for it Father Niza saw it from a distance and went back to Mexico City and told the Viceroy of all the great cities and cultures up here. And so the next year, Coronado with 700 men came up here looking for the seven cities of Cibola, all paved with gold. Of course, they never found it. They turned at the Casa Grande ruins and went east, ended up in New Mexico, is kind of the thinking, and according to his diaries, so he never found it. Father Nisa was called a fraud for lying about what he saw. And so he he uh, died of fraud. So that's Coronado's 
tie to the superstitions as well. So Chico Mochtoc is the name of the mountain where the Aztecs were originated. And the story is that there was a mountain with seven caves that each group or type of Aztec kind of hatched or were born and then when everybody was done they, they came out and went their separate ways. Um, and it was a 200 year migration from here to Tenochtitlan. Um, Cotepec is a name from a hill too, a snake hill or snake mountain and this, these could all be that, uh, this mountain could be all those places. Obviously the snakes right here on the, for the ruins, I don't know if I even talked about that, but here on the north end I found of the uh, Sunlight dagger. I decided to look at, look up, see if there's anything farther north, and and we had the the snakes here. So they said the the legend is that there's two snakes. Some of the pyramids have um, uh, snakes coming down them too, and snake is the symbol for the divine energy. The Quetzalcoatl is a feathered serpent, a plume serpent. And so it's the serpent has been and still is today in our medical, even our medical uh, symbols and our modern medicine have two snakes coil up a okay here's some of the ruins at the north end of the uh, light sunlight dagger, I call it. It's going to make these round barely perceptible, but they could be a couple thousand years old. There's ruins here. Here's kind of an L shape, a square building. Here, I'm going to do it again. I'm not sure if I got this this in the. When I first started looking here, the first thing I noticed was these. I'm going to call it a snake, but it looks like a snake, doesn't it? This rock. It jump, kind of jumps out at you, even from a distance. You're like, I'm starting to look for anything man-made there. I think this may not be man-made, but it's a geological formation. But it sure looks like a snake, and I can see how ancient civilizations may have considered that. This is a little fainter. But there's a snake at one of the pyramids in Mexico that uh, it's at the equinox, the, the step in the pyramid with the sunlight and the shading, it looks as the sun moves, it looks like the snake is coming down the, the pyramid. And there's the, the head of the snake at the bottom. So it's very famous. Um, so they, again, were they trying to pattern their, their buildings? after these mountains and these natural formations where it started. If this is Cotepec, Snake, Snake Mountain, it's also where Quetzalcoatl and the sun god were born here. But Chico Mochtoc is the origination location of the Aztecs. All the other ancient civilizations have similar ones. The Mayans have a fairly complicated one, but they all, I think they all came from the same place and they were all kind of the same bunch eventually, you know, way back. So, they all may have this mountain in their legends and stories, a religious culture.
But the mountain top was gone. Remember those trees where as kids we dreamed. Shame's up.